Welcome to today's episode of Tech Teardown, sponsored by Mauser Electronics, where we look inside two interesting and similar electronics products and provide engineering insights into their components and design features. is an authorized distributor of electronic components from the world's leading manufacturers. Today, we'll be comparing two LED light strips, a very basic white-only LED lighting strip and a multicolored LED light strip with remote control. Let's take a look inside and see what's in these packages. This is the white-only LED strip. It's got a USB plug and a wire that connects directly to the strip. Now let's take a peek at the color. Now, obviously, there's a lot more inside of this one. So looking at just the strip itself here of this RGB one, it doesn't have the power plug directly connected to it. Obviously, we've got a remote because there's a lot more functionality and the power stuff here. Now, we're going to dim the lights here and plug everything in so you can see how they look. The white light is blindingly bright, as you can probably see. Now, with the remote control, we can change the color of the RGB one and look at functions like flashing, automatically change, now that we've seen them work, we can bring the lights back on and talk about what's going on from an engineering perspective. Clearly the biggest difference between these two LED light strip systems is one provides only the single color white, while the other provides control of the color, the light intensity, blinking through the external remote control. The power supplies are also pretty significantly different. This one uses five volts DC from a USB plug. This one is using 12 volts with an external power converter. The white strips are only one meter in length, but they have 320 LEDs in every strip because they're really tightly spaced. They're about three millimeters apart between each light. The RGB is five meters in length, so it's much longer, but the LED spacing is also longer. So it's 55 millimeter spacing, and that means you only have 90 LEDs on each strip. Now let's take a look inside to see how these products have been engineered. We're gonna begin with the white LED strip. The white LED strip has this light diffuser adhered to the top, and the strip is designed to be cut in the middle of these two copper bars. So let's go ahead and do that here. I'm gonna use the adhesive strip to mount a piece of this here. Cut this on the end. Now I've got another identical strip here that will also attach next to it and cut it. And this is going to allow us to compare side by side with and without the diffuser, which means that I've got to peel the diffuser off of one of these. It kind of comes off in chunks, it appears. Now I've got one of these here with the original diffuser still intact, and this one up here that I've removed the diffuser. Now let's plug those in just so we can see the difference. There's the original with the diffuser. And here we can see the individual LEDs. It's pretty interesting. You can see how closely these are spaced, but also the color change. The diffuser is changing it from a pretty blue light to a more softer yellow kind of white light. Let's turn those off so we can look at what's going on now. All right, as we look at this strip here, we can see it's kind of in segments. Each section is delineated by the cut line. The copper bars tell us where we can cut the device. The five volts runs the length of it from the power, as does ground. And then we have a number of very tiny LEDs. There's also a current limiting resistor. So this current limiting resistor is connected to eight parallel LEDs. So eight LEDs, we're gonna share one current limiting resistor. These LEDs are tiny. They're 0603 metric footprint, which means they're 0.6 millimeters by 0.3 millimeters. We can see if we zoom in really close here, the entire circuit. The 5 volt DC signal connects to one side of the current limiting resistor. The other side of the resistor fans out to the LEDs that are on each side. The LEDs are connected to the current limiting voltage on one side and ground on the other. It's really a pretty simple circuit, but with these white LED strips designed for simple illumination, it works just fine. Now, let's check out the design and manufacturing of the RGB light strip. I'm going to mount it here in parallel with the other white LED strips that we just did. Now, without even the lights on, the obvious difference here is that there's no LED diffuser on the RGB light strip. The other thing you can see clearly is these LEDs, they're much, much larger. Right? We got the little tiny LEDs on the white, and we got these giant LEDs here. Each LED has associated with it its own dedicated current limiting resistor. So where we're sharing it, eight of them over here share one current limiting resistor. On the RGB, each one of these big LEDs has its own 
The resistor value can be calculated from the three-digit code that is written on the top. So 471 indicates 47 times 10 raised to the first power. So that's 47 times 10 or 470 ohms. These RGB LEDs have a 50-50 metric footprint, meaning it's five millimeters by five millimeters. There's four signals here that must pass the length of the strip. There's red, green, blue, and power, the 12 volt DC. And each of the RGB signal lines provide a control signal for the individual on-chip LED. Let's go ahead and power them up now, side by side, so we can kind of see how this looks. We have with the diffuser, without the diffuser. Now let's apply some power. And there you can see the color, and we can change that. Now that we've looked at the strips and compared their functionalities, let's look at the other pieces of the RGB system that allow it to operate. So if we take the controller here, on the end of it, we have the IR sensor. So that's the little sensor here at the end in this case, and of course the plugs. Now we're gonna open this up and see what's inside. All right, I was able to get this pried open so that we can see the PCB inside of here. The barrel connector for the power on the end. On the back side of it, the wires are soldered to go to the three different cables, the one for the IR sensor and the two that connect to the LED strips. On the top of the PCB is the controller IC here in the middle. I'm not sure what part this is. There's no markings that identify it. It's interesting here, we see this often on PCBs, is there's a place here to populate another IC. It's empty. I don't know if they use this board in another design. It's hard to say, but uh, it's clearly unpopulated right here. All right, let's set that aside. Now let's tear apart the IR remote to see what's going on inside of here. To do that, I'm gonna peel back the label here, the buttons on the top. On the bottom of this, you see there's an array of 44, I think these are probably a printed carbon material. Carbon is good because it's low resistance, relatively low resistance, but it's also rigid. So as you push it and move it, it doesn't wear out very well. These carbon pads sit over the array of resistors. What it is, is the interdigitated fingers. So they don't touch. You've got two conductors on either side and there's a gap between those digits. When this gets pushed down, the carbon shorts across those. So you now you have electric connection. On the front here, we have the IR LED, the coin cell battery connector, and here in the middle is the Meshway MT911-12 infrared remote control IC. So this tech teardown comparison was really interesting to me because the same fundamental circuit is at the core of each of these devices. You've got a light emitting diode, a current limiting resistor, and signal paths for power and ground. But it highlights the engineering ingenuity that can then be applied to create different systems with different capabilities to meet different application needs. If you have clear, consistent, almost blindingly bright white light, the simple white LED strip is perfect. But if you wanna control the color, the intensity, get dynamic color sequencing, and much more from the palm of your hand, then you naturally need the more complex RGB system. Either way, our lives are brighter because of the creative design and manufacturing technology that enables these products to be mass produced. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Tech Teardown, sponsored by Mauser Electronics, as we give you an engineer's look inside interesting electronics products. And for your next electronics project, I would encourage you to head over to mauser.com where you can find helpful design and engineering resources that include a bomb tool, ECAD design library, project manager data sheets, and so much more. And I hope you join me again for the next Tech Teardown. <laughs>